That's better. Can everybody hear me? Yes. Awesome. Wait, only the front people said. Can everybody hear me? Yeah. OK. I'll pull it up a little bit more. OK, how many folks before tonight did not know that Austin has an astronomical society? Raise your hand. Shame. <laughs> but you're here tonight, so you're here to learn. Appreciate that, obviously. Um, OK. So uh, let's, okay, cool. You guys are good with audience participation. So let me ask you a question. How many were alive during Kennedy's short but excellent presidency? Okay, keep your hands raised if you know the seven words that spurned the space age to go forward. Does anybody know that? I see, I see one hand back there. No, no, nobody? Yes, we choose. Okay, I'm gonna do my best here. This shouldn't hurt you. Woo, okay. One for one, all right, yes. All right, let's not screw this up. Yes, we choose to go to the moon. In this decade, I, I love that how he said decade, and do the other things not because they are easy, but because they are hard. So he gave this talk in 1962, and it lit a fire that was already existing. We had already gotten to the point where we were um, putting men up in orbit, but we had not yet been to the moon. And this lit a fire, and this got things going, and it got us to, uh, a little over 50 years ago, to this. All right. Let's see if it works. Rebecca? <laughs> I'll take too much time anyway. You probably have seen this because it's been a 50-year anniversary. At 15 oh. seconds, guidance is internal. 12, 11, 10, 9. So this is for all of us that like weren't actually born. Six, five, this went up. four, three, two, one, zero. All engines on. saw this on TV. We Raise have a liftoff. Liftoff on Apollo 11. Okay. So this got things going in the space race. We got a man to the moon four days later, but it also inspired a group of 50 people here in Austin to uh, get together with uh, assistance from the Parks and Rec Department and meet at this quaint little place called the Austin Nature Center, which is now the Austin Nature and Science Center. Nice. Um, and 50 years ago today, they formed the Austin Astronomical Society. <clears throat> which was really simple. They wanted to gather a group of people together that shared a, a general interest in space science and in astronomy and to provide uh, information uh, along these backgrounds. And uh, we have since later added on a uh, little caveat of doing public outreach, for which we have done a lot of. It's a, a large cornerstone of our society. Um, and you'll see that this is 50 years ago, so a lot of the early documents we have were typewritten and handwritten and included some fairly entertaining cartoons as well. Um, many of which were kind of, um, I didn't quite get all of them and they might be inappropriate, so I left some of them out. <laughs> um, now, one of the things that surprised me, I have been on the, in the club for about 11 years now. I was on the board for over nine. Um, and we're kind of a humorous bunch. Believe it or not, astronomers can be rather uh, jovial. And uh, I was under the impression in doing this research that, you know, oh, that's just us. That's just this time of, you know, the generation. Um, not thinking that these guys were actually quite humorous. And, and you can see this is one of the very first minutes they took. Um, the secretary, the gentleman taking the notes, said if there are any errors, he will deny, kind of disavow any knowledge of the club. Um, he also uh, seemed to refer to this whole thing as a fictitious agenda. Um, and then noticed uh, that they were making elections and they we were trying to figure out who the sucker would be uh, for treasurer. Funny fact, we always have a hard time filling that role. Don't know why. Um, this was my, my personal favorite. Future plans were discussed about possible topics of conversation and the first item, general BS. 
they're a funny group. We can't name for shit, but we're a funny group of people. All right, so moving on. One of the things that they put out in the very beginning was a newsletter. Most astronomy clubs all over the country, all over the world have a newsletter. They weren't quite sure what to call it initially, so they just called it the newsletter. One month later, they gave it the name of the Lone Astronomer, um, which is kind of sad because they actually began with 50 members, but apparently they all kind of felt alone in the dark when observing. Um, that actually was only because it also lost out to the starlight. <laughs> but later on, uh, they they did tend to uh, name it the name we've had ever since, the Sidereal Times, and I will totally throw out and hopefully make it another uh, <clears throat> glow bracelet. If anybody can tell me an error they see in this slide. Sidereals, miss. Oh, God, you're back there far. Okay. All right, I didn't play baseball for a reason. Yes, uh, for some reason, sidereal was spelled in the first few months, but they corrected it later on. Um, and we have the name of that newsletter to this day. Yeah. Thank you. So the 70s were uh, kind of interesting. They were just getting started, but they already had established a location for observing, which is not easy. Can anybody guess where their first observing location might have been? Oh, you are so good, yes. It's a Nike missile site. Okay, so it's now the University of Austin's Police Academy training facility. It was a Nike missile facility, and at the time that uh, AAS was using it, it was actually a research facility. This is out in Bee Cave. Uh, a lot of the, the structures are still there, but for astronomers, it was a great place because this was 50 years ago. Things weren't as bright as they are now. It gave a nice, flat, stable surface for them to put up chairs, to do talks, for them to put up telescopes, and make it really simple for them to to do their observations um, without having the obstruction of, you know, dirt, fire ants, stickers, all these wonderful things that we actually have issue with on a regular basis. Um, and the 70s were fun. They were doing a lot of trips. They were going to NASA. They were meeting the Apollo 15 astronauts. That's pretty cool. Um, they actually ran on a nine month schedule, which we actually run full year round. So they took a little break over the summer, I'm guessing because a lot of them were probably students. Um, and at this time, they were in the process of building a telescope. They wanted a telescope for the club. And with the use of donations and club money, they built a 12 and a half inch telescope, which doesn't seem big now. But at the time, it was the biggest telescope in all of Austin. Um, and it actually is still used by the club today, which is kind of cool. Um, so they were meeting out at the Nature and Science Center. They later moved to a farm and savings home facility. This is going to be the first move of many. So those of you who want an extra point, keep score. And uh, they also had picnics. This was also the 70s. 79 was the year of the first Texas Star Party. Um, can anybody tell me, does anyone know who Deborah Bird is? Ooh, right down there. Yes. And she was also the, uh, if anybody knows, she was also the producer, co-producer and writer for a fairly common and very famous uh, radio bit called Stardate. You guys ever heard of it? Raise your hand. Okay. The rest of you, it's seven o'clock every night, NPR, every night. Um, yes, yeah, so she was actually, uh, she started that. She did a lot of work in astronomy. She now also has a Earth and Sky radio show. And she was actually in uh, 79, she was actually our first female president. Um, we wouldn't have another female president for another 15 years. <laughs> In the 80s, things were going strong. We were doing a lot of work with the University of Texas at Austin here, Astronomy Day, um, which is still going. We still work with them on Astronomy Day. Um, and based on my figures, we've probably had about 30 to 40,000 people over the years at Astronomy Day. Uh, so we're going to be keeping track of these numbers too because I think there was a trivia question in there somewhere. Um, they were working on also getting a planetarium in Austin. Did not work. We're still trying. Uh, but after this, they, they did, had uh, meetings transferred to the Austin Community College. And uh, they started taking part in a thing called Safari. Does anybody here remember Safari in Austin? Right back there. What was Safari? Um, 
So it was like a big parks and rec kind of people coming out. Astronomers brought out telescopes. It went on for ages. Um, it actually went on for 29 years. And again, right there, about 45,000 people, we figure, that AAS had an opportunity to educate during those events. Jumping into the 90s, we've got a logo. We've got an observatory that we're building. So originally the plans were to build an observatory out at Pedernales Falls. Those fell through. Then the club looked at Pace Bend Park of Buffalo Lake Travis. And then LCRA came to them and said, hey, we're building this place called Canyon of the Eagles. We think it might be a good spot for you. And sure enough, they went out there. Uh, they looked at the space. It was a huge field. It was a lovely area. They started immediately. Um, they got t-shirts. In fact, down here, we've got a sample of our lovely t-shirt. <laughs> they developed a logo for the observatory and uh, they got moving. And that actually, uh, it took about another five or six years um, to get that going. There's a picture of Don Olson. Does anyone here know who Don Olson is? <laughs> All right, yes, Don Olson. So back in the, the 90s, Don Olson started coming to our meetings. He's probably one of the most well-attended presenters we've ever had. If you don't know who he is, look up the Celestial Sleuth or become a member and come to our meetings where he'll probably be talking in a few months. Um, but also during that time, uh, our amateur telescope astronomer group got started, and later on, Greg's going to be talking to you a lot about ATM telescopes. Uh, we also, um, unfortunately, in the, in the early 90s, we had the passing of Harlan Smith, who was a big supporter of AAS, a regular presenter. Um, and so the telescope, the 12 and a half inch telescope that was helped, uh, he helped build, was dedicated in his honor. Um, so that was really important to the club. Uh, we also started Wild Basin events. We started Family Night Under the Stars. Did anybody ever go? to Family Night Under the Stars. It's actually the precursor to our annual event now, Austin Under the Stars. Um, this was also where they moved temporarily to the Ernest Cockrell Building. <laughs> Again, another move uh, for meetings. And they also got their first 501c3, yay nonprofits. Then we get into the 2000s. This is where things really start speeding up. We're getting up into you know the 200, 250 members at this point. Um, also. Any guesses how much a monthly membership cost when the club first started? Any guesses, anybody? Anybody? Just throw out a number, any number. Who, who said eight? Who said eight? It was seven. Not bad. Make sure he gets that, thank you. Actually, by today's inflation, that membership would be $48. You pay a little bit more than half that. So getting a hell of a deal. Uh, <laughs> so by, <clears throat> excuse me, by the early 2000s, things were really going up the observatory. We were having regular Central Texas star parties, regular star parties every single month for both public and members. Uh, schmooze a little bit with some fancy folks. If, can anybody identify that gentleman in the lower picture there? I heard you say that first. Uh -huh. his, uh His sister actually uh, used to be a member, and he was a member for a very short period of time. So it's a nice little claim to fame we have. All right, at this point, the 2000s got really busy because we moved to the Bass Lecture Hall, the ECJ meeting room, back to the Bass Lecture Hall, and then we found a new home at RLM. Uh, this was also the year uh, in 2001 that we started with Austin Under the Stars, and we've been running that event with St. Stephen's Episcopal School ever since. So we start at the beginning. There's some really fun stuff here. Typewritten typewritten, somewhat of a header change. Oh my gosh, this was when we got desktop publishing. Yeah. Pretty cool stuff. We went to color. And this is where we are today with this. So what's great about this newsletter is, uh, with the exception of a couple instances, this newsletter has been regularly published every single month for 50 years. There are over almost 600 editions of this newsletter. 
I, I actually have looked at every single one, yes, uh, to get information for tonight. Another thing, so in that 50 year span, we've had 25 editors and dozens of more contributing editors. In fact, this newsletter has won the Mabel Stearns Award three times, twice in first place, second place uh, for the third time. That's a huge award because that is actually uh, regulated by the Astronomical League. So this is a newsletter that's won an award out of every single astronomical society in the country. And in Texas alone, there's about 40. So that's a pretty big deal. Now getting into the last 10 years, we've done a lot of awesome stuff. I'm gonna pull out the laser pointer here. Hopefully it's not too bright. Okay, here we go. So we've been regularly at the last three years of the Night Sky Festival. Has anybody been here before? Okay, good, come on. Drink your beer, drink your beer, talk. All right, we also started introducing a thing called practical astronomy in our meetings. It's a great opportunity for our members to take a little bit of time to educate folks on things that they're interested in astronomy. So it's not just you know your big headliner speakers, it's members teaching members. A lot of hands-on stuff, a lot of basic, uh, just getting to know how to use a telescope, how to use eyepieces. Uh, we even had a, a musical band at our holiday parties, a cool banjo and an accordion. We are happening people. Who remembers the Venus transit of 2012? Who was on the UT campus with us in 2012? We thought we were gonna be happy with 50 people. We had 2,000. We went down the entire 14 flights of stairs of the RLM building. It was awesome. And unfortunately, it's not gonna happen in our lifetime again, so sorry if you missed it. Uh, We've also since acquired some amazing technology. Terry and uh, Greg are gonna go into this. We have a 24 inch and now a 25 inch Dobsonian. So those mirrors are 24 and 25 inches across. That's a light, a lot of light bucket. Uh, we've had some amazing talks. We've had talks from astronauts. We've had a lot of talks from postdocs here. Rebecca's been a speaker for us, I think, twice now. Yes, ma'am. Um, and in fact, just two months ago, we had uh, Dr. Steven Weinberg, a Nobel laureate, uh, we filled the house. We exceeded capacity. Shh, wait, is there anyone here from the fire department? <laughs> we had over 125 people attend that event, and he was amazing. So we have some really phenomenal speakers uh, that do come to our events. We also like to go to the movies. Ever so often, we'll get contacted to uh, showcase some information about astronomy. And I think we've been to The Martian. Um, and then where else? We've gone to another movie. Oh, The Hidden Figures. Yes, yeah, so we got to see that early on. Of course, as I mentioned, we have Austin Under the Stars. We do that every year. That draws a pretty big crowd of about 300 to 400 people. Really cool stuff that's happening now. So we severed ties in 2018 with Canyon of the Eagles because we wanted to spread our wings out. And we have amazing partnerships right now with Pedernales Falls State Park. Right. Oh, oh my God, this is not my laser pointer. Hold on. <laughs> with Pedernales Falls State Park and with Inks Lake State Park. And that's held every other month at each of those locations. And there's actually information on the swag table um, for the following next few months and our star parties out there. Uh, so I mentioned earlier the Mabel Stearns Award. Uh, this is the Astronomical League. So they're sort of the overarching umbrella of all the registered astronomical societies now in the world. They're actually an international program now. Um, they have over 70 different observing programs. So we're not professionals. Uh, we don't do this for uh, pay. We're volunteers. So this is a way for us to do some fun observing lists and get fun pins and certificates. We really love pins lots of pins. Um, but what's awesome is out of the 70 programs they offer, uh, we've had 151 programs that have been awarded to our members. We also have a total of three master observers. So that takes 10 different programs, one of which is called a Herschel 400. And that 400 isn't just randomly placed there. They have to observe 400 objects and log them. So this is actually a lot of work that they're doing in their spare times. A lot of time in the dark, uh, but it's still a lot of fun. We also have some amazing astrophotographers. 
we may be amateur astronomers, but these guys are the real deal. These are the professionals that are out there and they have put out, this is just a very modest sampling. We've got folks that are building telescopes, that are building equipment. You'll see tonight, we've got some fun prizes, including a planisphere that was designed by two of our members that's out there being used by astronomers. And some phenomenal folks that are just taking some really stunning, in my opinion, in a lot of ways, better than Hubble quality images. We also have a lot of members that do stuff outside and have created organizations and created products. We have the Celestial Teapot, I was telling you, this is an amazing planisphere. Um, I believe we have Amy Jackson, where are you? You can just raise a hand. There she is in the back. That is Starry Sky Austin right there. She does her own teaching programs and education programs for adults and children. Uh, actually, one of our honorary lifetime members right here, does anybody know what this symbol is for? Not down in front. Not the guys in the front. <laughs> a program called Sky Safari used by almost every single amateur astronomer was designed by one of our members. So that's pretty cool. Uh, we also have a gentleman who's running an international occultation timing association. Say that 10 times fast. Uh, we have a gentleman, Rob Bettingill, who's usually here. I don't know if he's here tonight. Give a shout out if you are. He may be at home recovering. He actually just got back from an ambassador program, a nine day expedition to Chile to look at the telescopes there. So we do some pretty cool stuff in our spare time. And uh, of course, a little shout out to me, Earthbound Astronomer. Some really neat stuff in the horizon. We've got a member who's provided us with some phenomenal land where we have dropped our dome telescope and have this space available to our members for dark sky observing. This is huge, land is expensive. It's really great when we can pair up with somebody who's willing to help us use their space. Also helps when they're also interested in astronomy too. Um, and this area is just developing and it's got a lot of potential for future use. So if that's something that interests you, definitely come talk to us, sign up as a member. Another really cool thing that's happening is we've just signed an agreement with Pedernales Falls State Park for a semi-temporary rollout observatory. So this will be placed at their facility. We will have at least one of our large-scale telescopes out there. And they've made arrangements to make a path and have areas where we can place our large scopes and then they'll be in that circle in the field there. We usually set up anywhere from half a dozen to a dozen telescopes on a regular basis during our public star parties. So this is really big. Look for more information, look for more news coming out about this. We'll probably have a little soiree out there. Hopefully the weather will be clear. So one thing I wanna mention, 50 years, it's a long time. Um, but it's also a short time in many respects. Like I said, we've been doing the numbers, we've been crunching some things. Roughly, and this is a very, I'd say a very padded number, um, but as of you know, our 50th anniversary, we assume that we have actually helped and done public outreach for half a million people, which is pretty awesome. <laughs> So uh, let's aim for another half a million, if at least not more. Thank you. Let's hear it for Dawn, Earthbound you. Astronomer. Awesome. Okay, so we've got plenty of time for questions. And, and I've got more bracelets. Super good motivation. The way this will work, you ask a question, one of us will remember to, to repeat, repeat it. it. Yes. And then we'll go from there. And if it's, a, it's very difficult to see the balcony, so if you have a question up there, please make yourself known. That would be very helpful. So who's got a question? Start us off. Yes. Come <laughs> see me at intermission, I'll show you how. Can't, the question was, can you join okay. tonight? See? Okay. Wait. All right. Yeah. <laughs> oh, well. These are really sweet bracelets. <laughs> They're red. We use red out on the observing field to protect our eyes. Frisbee. Oh, okay. Frisbee style. Frisbee. Okay. Any Another other questions? Question? Oh, right there. Right there. The coolest thing I've seen in my telescope, um, I actually had it prepared for, uh, yes, but the coolest thing is seen in my telescope. I actually took my telescope out and had it properly situated for solar observing and got to see my very first full solar eclipse uh, back in 2017 in Casper. So that was pretty phenomenal. 
2024 here in Austin, April 8th, we're going to have a huge, wonderful uh, solar eclipse. Put it on your calendars. <laughs> Clear your schedule. Question back there. Have we had any members for the full 50 years? Yes. We actually have three members uh, that are still members today. They were original founding members, uh, one of which has been our historian who provided me with a lot of information. Um, so yes, we do, and it's, it's pretty phenomenal having them with us. Thank you. Anybody I, up I'll, on the balcony? If you want a bracelet, you can come down for it. I'm not gonna try <laughs> that. Any questions up on the balcony? Can't see, how about right here? So the question was, do we have folks that would be willing to travel to other clubs to provide outreach? Um, we do. There have been several that have, have traveled. It sort of depends on what the event is, uh, what the travel distance is like. Uh, but if, yes, absolutely. And actually, where is Joyce? Joyce Lynch right over here. She is our current and has been on and off for going on eight or nine years, our outreach chair. So you can definitely speak with her. She can, she can connect you with the right folks. All right, any last questions? All right, you, our speakers will all be around yep. if you have questions during intermission. And let's thank Earthbound Astronomer again. Thank you.